Jumping San Pedro or Shakespeare by the Sea, yeah, the money is yours. You'll eventually get paid. Go ahead and do the service. Because right now we don't know. Point well I think taken. it's a simple point well taken. It is not simple. But okay. it's a point well taken. <laughs> and, I'm sorry, and it's not simple. <laughs> but it's but a that is a that we ought to have. No, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And it, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the distribution of the money needs to happen as fast as it possibly can. And so we're trying to keep the pedal to the metal as much as we can on that. But you know, you raise an important point. Even if that part can't happen, having clear differentiation between what is certain what is possible and what is not possible, I think would probably be a great help to you. And, and to the extent that I can figure out a way that we can get that done, even in the interim, even before the money is distributed, uh, that's, a, that's a very good point. I'll, I'll try and consider how we might be able to do that. Okay. Let's, let's see what you got. Um, part of what Sean has said, and come in. when you're looking at reorganization, um, I was a member of the uh, Neighbor Council Review Commission, one of the people who fought against it. Another member here can say I did fight against it. Um, the, the NCRC was basically um, um, sold the bill of goods with regard to this election problem in general. It could have been easily solved, but they didn't want to solve it. And passed on to the uh, city clerk. What's happened is, as part of our budgets, the neighborhood councils are actually paying for the election, they're paying for all the outreach. Uh, Wendy Gruel had envisioned that last year when they talked about a $45,000, she said it's a $5,000, then we would expect you to take $5,000 as part of your outlay. Uh, there must be some way, even though the, the, the charter uh, puts um, uh, elections with done, a function which could be moved out to another city department, um, but somehow if we can get outsourced, there should be a, an ability for what's left of done to do an RFP with whomever, to include elections. Yeah. That is a, that, the, number one, that would be a money saving. And number two, it would give neighborhood councils more control and more participation over their own uh, um, lifestyle. And yeah. as an aside, thank you for recognizing that the city attorney is a risk aversion oh, organization. Yeah, I mean, that took me five <laughs> minutes to figure that out. Uh, thank you, in fact, the, the, the election part, I'm glad you raised that because that uh, I forgot to mention that. And frankly, you know, it's a kind of it's a good ex it was a good example to me of you know what's wrong with our policy making in the city. Because here you had a situation where the council decides, um, well, you know, these neighborhood council elections, let's move them over to the professional operator of elections, just the city just clerks. Just as just as yeah. a matter of history. Yeah. That was a neighborhood council review commission recommendation to the city council. It was an official recommendation, yeah. but most of the people there were sold the bill of goods, and a lot of them didn't understand what was wrong with that idea. But regardless, 15 council members said, let's do this. Let's move it over to the clerk's office. So, uh, you know, fast forward to the middle of a budget crisis, and the council is throwing up its hands and say, why in the world are we spending $2 million to have the clerk run neighborhood council elections? And well, this is terrible. What we, let's stop this. Weeks before the first election was supposed to begin. And so, you know, I kind of said, uh, you know, yes, it would probably be better if we weren't spending $2 million to administer these elections probably be better if the neighborhood councils had that $2 million to, and let them run their own elections. But we're, the, the horse is kind of out of the barn at this point, and you can't ask neighborhood councils to completely change the way they're going to run their election after this money has been spent, after people have <coughs> allocated money for outreach, um, after, you know, Dates have been set and locations have been set and all this. And now you're going to change the rules in the middle of an election? It was insane. And so, thankfully, we were able to, to stop that. And it was, you know, it was a hard for a lot of members to swallow because it's, it's real money. That's a lot of money that was being spent for these elections. But we had no choice in that. It was more than, than $2 million It was four, and no, then they cut it down no, to the two. Consider that eight staffers moved from Dunn 
to um, the city clerk's office to administer these elections. Yeah. So the city clerk's budget was paying for those eight right. staffers. So now that being said, you know, part of what we did in our review of all this was we, we said a couple of things. First, uh, the clerk needs to identify as many possible ways to realize cost efficiencies and reduce the cost. I, I, I have to say I don't think that effort's been very successful. Um, you know, I, I think she's tried. I really think they've made an effort, but it's a different yeah. way of thinking. Of, you know, she's used to running big elections, and, you know, they want to do it very officially and fairly and formally. And, and so in that world, in that universe, it's hard to find cost efficiencies if you accept that as your, as your premise, you know. So, she, so that effort hasn't been too successful. So we've kind of pressed, okay, we'll get more volunteer support. And again, she's tried um, it, it, with limited limited success, I think. There just hasn't been as much involvement. There's, there's, some, as there's some restriction reasons because of it. Um, the third thing that, that we, we did in that was to say, we want periodic reports from the clerk as to how it's going. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of this election cycle, we're going to do an, sort of an after action report that says, okay, what's the best policy moving forward from now? I can guarantee you it's not going to be status quo. Um, it will be something, and, and, and I, I don't want to prejudge before I get the results back of how these elections went, but I think my default position would be, my assumption would be, that each neighborhood council can probably be left to administer its own election with some support for dispute resolution and you know to have a, a an independent evaluator there or something you don't need to have all this machinery uh, connected with, with the election um, but i don't know i'm reserving judgment on that until a we get the report back from the clerk about how these elections went and b i get broad input from neighborhood councils themselves yeah, about what, they, what, what they were yeah, yeah. the second the second is going to be important because i've yeah. listened to the rosy reports of the clerk's office so far yeah, no, I, I, I don't. I, I, I think she'd just as soon hand it over at this point, sir. Uh, Mr. Councilman, uh, we miss you at Griffith Park uh, Neighborhood Council when you used to represent Thank you. We had one doozy of an election last Saturday. We had 1,500 and... Uh, uh, wow. You had 1,500 people turn out? Yes, unfortunately, they were not all state voters. Uh, <laughs> 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 we had a little slight Are we being uh, manipulated by people? 